Hello everyone, my name is Eleni Petru and today I will present some research on Pacific herring that was done in collaboration with partners at the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, NOAA Fisheries, the Sitka Tribe of Alaska, the University of Oregon, and the UW. Pacific herring are a culturally, ecologically, and economically important species in the North Pacific ecosystem. In recent decades, the abundance and distribution of herring spawning has contracted in some areas, leading to concern about the conservation status and long-term viability of herring populations. A large body of research suggests that conserving genomic-wide genetic variation supports population viability. In this study, we investigated how chromosomal inversions, which is a kind of genome-wide variation, may influence the spawn timing in Pacific herring using whole genome sequencing. We collected 600 herring from 12 different spawning sites in the Salish Sea and Southeast Alaska that encompassed a range of spawn times ranging from January to May. Throughout this talk, winter spawners are shown in blue, spring spawners are shown in pink, and late spring spawners are shown in orange. Next, we used low coverage whole genome sequencing to identify over 600,000 variable sites or SNPs in the genome. We compared patterns of genome-wide divergence between different spawn groups and found that they were highly diverged at some, but not all, chromosomes. For example, certain chromosomes contained whole regions spanning millions of base pairs in length, which had very high genetic differentiation. I've highlighted some of these regions in the plot with black arrows. Investigate this pattern further we estimated linkage disequilibrium in each of the 26 chromosomes. Linkage disequilibrium is defined as the non-random association of alleles across a chromosome, and it indicates whether groups of specific alleles are inherited together. We found areas with high linkage disequilibrium that are shown in blue on the, on the plot, and these span millions of base pairs on multiple chromosomes. In particular, I wanted uh, draw your attention to chromosomes 7, 8, 12, and 15, where you can see those big blue chunks. These patterns of linkage disequilibrium are consistent with the presence of large chromosomal rearrangements, such as inversions. In an inversion, the orientation of a segment of a chromosome is reversed end-to-end. -end. Because inversions suppress meiotic recombination in heterozygous individuals, they tend to accumulate genetic differences over time. Thus, it has been hypothesized that they may play a key role in maintaining polymorphism in complex traits. In empirical studies in diverse taxa, such as fruit flies, sunflowers, and cod, have found that inversions are associated with ecotypic differentiation in these species. Next, we estimated Tajimus D across the genome. The purpose of this test statistic is to identify regions whose genetic diversity is influenced by selection or demographic events. In this plot, the chromosomes are shown in the different panels and each population is depicted by a separate line whose color indicates spawn timing. The dotted vertical lines show the boundaries of chromosomal inversions. Elevated to GMS D within some of the inversions, in particular on chromosomes 7, 8, 12 and 15 may imply that these inversions are under balancing selection in populations of winter and late spring spawning herring. Our results emphasize the importance of conserving this genetic diversity in herring that may contribute to phenological diversity in this forage fish. With that, I would like to thank our funding sources, Washington Sea Grant, the North Pacific Research Board, and the National Science Foundation. And I'd like to help thank the many people who helped collect spawning herring in the field. Thanks for your time.